uh, fortunate to have Dr. Ajay, Ajay uh, Choreshia with us today. Now, uh, over to uh, Dr. Ajay. So please, sir. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Komda, for a very detailed, in fact, uh, introduction. So, and first of all, I, at the outset, and my personal behalf, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to interact with the uh, really very learned faculty and students. And uh, I'm really overwhelmed to see the huge participation, over 130 uh, participants. It's really a very great challenge, and I'm very happy for that. So thank you so much, and uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I before st uh, starting the formal presentation uh, on confined masonry buildings, I wish you and your family a safe stay. Unlock one has started, but please don't get yourself unlocked. Please take care of, care of your family and your nearest and dearest ones. So thank you so much once again, all for inviting me and uh, joining me for this particular presentation for next couple hours couple of us so so <clears throat> my basically today's talks will talk will be on confined masonry buildings uh, focusing on the seismic resistance cost, cost effectiveness and highlighting that it is uh, why it is important and what is its comparison uh, with the conventionally used masonry or with the vis -vis the rcc frame structures apart from that they, uh, although this is a new kind of uh, technological systems which has been introduced in our country, so that's why and there was a lack of data about its understanding performance of uh, such buildings in earthquake loading. And for that purpose, we have conducted uh, extensive experimental work at CBRI. And uh, upon uh, yeah, so that I will be focusing on. And after apart from that. Retrofitting of confined masonry buildings have also been evaluated. So that will also be uh, discussed in subsequent slides. So thank you once again so, uh, for joining. And this, with this backdrop, I'd like to switch on the construction practices which has been adopted in our country. So am I audible and visible, ma'am? Uh, my slides are OK? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So when you look at our country, the existing building stocks, which is in which around 85% of existing buildings are masonry buildings. And it is well known that masonry is a heterogeneous material uh, having good compressive strength, but very poor in terms of compression, uh, in terms of tensile and shear strength. It is uh, highly vulnerable. In past earthquake, it demonstrated miserably and which has costed a uh, huge loss of life property, not only in India, but as well as in the globe. So it is, uh, but at, uh, in contrast, this particular material is widely being used in the country. Reason behind is locally available, construction uh, skills are available, simple in construction, thermally efficient, acceptability is there. So these are the, in contrast, advantages of it. But definitely for when we talk about uh, from the seismic point of view, we have to consider and we have to improve this particular tech, uh, confine, um, sorry, masonry buildings so that it can be, uh, apart from its advantage, we can do certain value addition from lateral load resistance point of view. So um, uh, in general, when you look at the masonry buildings, when they are subjected to earthquake, they are subjected to four different type of mechanisms. That is, in, uh, this, if I consider a simple wall, a single wall, masonry walls, it is subjected to in-plane forces, out of, uh, out of plane forces. And predominantly much failure is happening because of uh, out of plane failure. So, so these are the, uh, so whether it is a RCC frame building or masonry buildings. So these type of failures are very predominant apart from the different shear uh, failure mechanism like overturning, sliding, uh, rocking, and uh, so on and so forth. But unfortunately, in confined masonry, when you see, the, or in fact, the masonry, when you consider, it is very difficult to understand. It looks to be a very simple material system, but it is very difficult from engineering perspective because of its own uh, restraints. Restraints in the sense, the material properties, 
when you talk about the masonry there will be units these bricks blocks whatever it is connecting it is connected with it is arrayed in it is arranged in an array joined together by means of a some binder that is mortar which is also of different material and different uh, so because and the strength of mortar and strength of units are varying across the country right from 2.5 mpa to 25 mpa i'm talking about simple burnt clay brick units so with the so wide range of materials available you cannot draw uh, unified conclusions across the country so for that purpose understanding is must and for that detailed understanding we have conducted extensive work in cbri uh, to understand the masonry and as a result a code is also uh, has been introduced some formulation has also been introduced and it is given in is 1893 2016 so I, i will come to that later but we need to understand the behavior of the buildings and other under earthquakes and for that purpose when you talk about any masonry buildings i'm not come talking about the confined masonry at the moment uh, when you talk about any masonry buildings so typical damage pattern that you come, come across is collapse of parapet walls uh, collapse of roof or uh, tiles then saturation of two perpendicular walls uh, if walls are excessively long then overturning of the wall out of plane uh, out of plane failure of the walls then uh, vertical or diagonal cracks in the wall then corner failure inclined cracks above the lintel so on and, and so forth so these are the typical damage pattern typically you see in the masonry buildings after the earthquake so and uh, having uh, said that uh, our indian standards also provide certain guidelines for ideal uh, ideally speaking the seismic resistant features in is 18913 uh, uh, sorry for is 4326 2013 that what are what are the prerequisites to be provided in the masonry building in terms in different seismic zones and different categories of the building categories i mean whether it is a residential building or a important building like hospitals or um, a school buildings so if i talk about the seismic zone 2 or 3 in that in all the buildings you have to have uh, to provide a rc lintel band rc band basically at different levels either at the plinth level sill level lintel level roof level gable end level so on and so forth so this is basically so this provides basically the integral box action in your building system that has to be provided at all the at one single level resting on the walls to in, uh, again to arrest the cracks so to arrange the cracks we have to also uh, and increase the deformability of the masonry buildings ideally speaking in seismic resistant as uh, uh, seismic resistant features which has been introduced in masonry buildings is a uh, vertical or corner vertical reinforcement that has to be provided at all the corners along the openings jams so on and so forth so one part is bands which gives the uh, integral box action in the system whereas vertical reinforcement that increases the deformability and thus combining together they controls the damage occurring in the building after subjected to earthquake but having uh, keeping in this particular background having known the uh, damages which are occurring can we improve upon this particular typology further in contrast when you go to the ruler area now there is a run after the rcc frame building everybody wants uh, and they want to show their they are of have high standard of living and that's why they are not constructing masonry building they are constructing rcc frame structures with infill walls but unfortunately we in our country in ruler sector in particular they doesn't understand how to mix uh, how to make concrete how to, what is the mixed design how to place the reinforcement and all this poor uh, workmanship and this results in the poor workmanship and vulnerable buildings and for that purpose it is a good proposition that we should adopt the confined masonry which is basically a mixture of unreinforced masonry building or masonry buildings and uh, rcc frame building uh, when you see the past earthquakes in our country in 2020 2001 
all the masonry uh, buildings have damaged extensively from severe to collapse also and that's why it is very important that we should uh, stop using masonry buildings in our country particularly in seismic zone 4 and 5 and promote the use of uh, the, the confined masonry which we will be discussing in subsequent slides so not only the masonry buildings rcc buildings still they are being adopted but when they are not been constructed properly again they are also leading to such kind of a collapse so why not to promote the building typology which is which can make use of locally available construction material skills as well as uh, which will be more robust than that of uh, the prevalent technologies and which will be having more acceptability from the society so uh, answer to this all uh, issues is a confined masonry so uh, so this is about the jabalpur earthquake which has also damaged uh, extensively masonry buildings suffered the damage now uh, before going to the confined masonry building it is very essential to understand uh, the seismic effect on the masonry buildings and their mode of failure whenever the masonry buildings are subjected to uh, they are very good when it is subjected to the gravity loads but when it they are subjected to the lateral loads earthquake loads in particular seismic loads then they are highly vulnerable they so for that purpose what is the mechanism of load transfer the inertial forces generated at the rooftop is transferred uh, in the opposite direction to the inertia, uh, inertia forces is generated opposite direction to the uh, uh, direction of the movement and then it is transferred from the roof in proportion with the mass of the roof and to the walls and from walls to the foundation while doing so it totally depends upon how how beautifully you have and how engineered way you have constructed your masonry walls so typically uh, speaking such masonry walls are subjected to different modes of failure such may, may failure includes the dilation dilation means increase in the volume in this photograph you can see in this corner uh, okay uh, before uh, before i proceed am i audible visible understandable i want a feedback from you am i going very yes, fast sir. yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Am, I, yes, sir. Audible. am i going very fast can i go slow or what i want to set a feedback for my improvement okay All is so fine. that you can enjoy my lecture. It's okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. I hope you are enjoying. <laughs> I'm not boring. Okay. So now, when you talk about the masonry walls, the typical mode of failures of the masonry walls includes the dilation. What is dilation? So you can see in this particular photographs. In this, you can see a two-story masonry house with. a uh, spitz roof like weight material and while this particular building was subjected to the lateral shaking there was a less amount of axial load acting on this wall and as a result the there was a separation between the masonry units and the mortar so you you see this picture a also so this is how the volume of masonry increases and as is it is loses its strength and that's why this is kind of a mode of this mode of failure is sub generally happens when the, there is less amount of axial load acting on the wall so this is called as a dilation there is the sliding of one part over the order so this generally happens at the lower courses of the masonry mortar in the masonry mortar particularly when the uh, axial load adequate amount of axial medium uh, class load is there but the strength of the mortar is very poor so in this case the horizontal uh, sliding is likely to occur uh, shear cracking is the diagonal cracking which is particularly uh, happens when there is a large amount of axial forces uh, axial load is acting and along with that it is coupled with the horizontal forces and unit strength is very poor so in that uh, and it is generally happening from the initiates from the corners of the openings or walls and it is marching in the diagonal direction so that is called as a shear cracking so that c is represents this kind of a failure then another is the rocking of masonry over its toe with the loss of contact under the uh, under on one side and excessive compression of toe on the other and as a result uh, crushing of units is also likely to happen so these are the four different ways in which the uh, masonry walls are likely to 
subjective to modes of the damage of, in the masonry wall typically now uh, at this after uh, understanding the behavior of the masonry and its importance on the different uh, fronts it is very essential to uh, understand uh, from the nature we have to learn from the nature as well so you can see this particular photograph very beautiful photograph very old building very poorly constructed but with the time it has been confined with the a tree if a bulldozer a bulldozer strikes on this bulldozer will damage but this particular masonry wall doesn't damage and whatever i said by now that better uh, masonry is a heterogeneous very, very poor in comp uh, lateral strength and all those things but because of this this intervention by this particular tree that has been overcome why not to borrow this particular mechanism from the nature to the uh, civil engineering and our friend is reinforced cement concrete elements so if we confined or you if we provide this lightly reinforced rc element at the periphery of the masonry definitely and when it is subjected to the horizontal shaking whatever the modes of failure what we have seen and uh, the uh, so that may be averted for example uh, masonry uh, wall suppose at a at this particular picture a you see when it is subjected to horizontal shaking it will be having dilution dilation and some cracking in the uh, masonry if it has been the same wall is provided with the lightly reinforced uh, element at the periphery which is embracing at all the sides and when it is uh, subjected to lateral loading at the bottom what will happen this kind of a failure will not occur at the most minor damages may occur in the rc element at the corners and overturning or crushing or collapse of masonry is averted at a very high strength so so this is what exactly the concept of the confined masonry and having learned from this small uh, phenomena uh, of the confined masonry how what is to be done we will see the later so basically the confined masonry is a, not a very new thing i cannot say but it is a very uh, uh, it is a practice which has been adopted since ages but unfortunately it was not understood properly i neither in our country or elsewhere in the, across the globe but it was adopted knowingly unknowingly and it has performed exceptionally good in latin america europe south asia and far east in, including in india also but and it will definitely perform uh, in a better fashion if built properly and uh, the confined masonry shows a very good performance in past earthquakes so these are the different earthquakes uh, world over having a great magnitude 7.5 plus 6 6.6 plus and in all these earthquakes whenever you construct a confined masonry buildings it has performed exceptionally good Uh, and that's why this is motivating me to undertake this particular research work apart from that when you performed a post earthquake damage uh, recurrence survey again there was a mixed reaction there were certain damage in the confined masonry as you look into this uh, internationally and there were the stories of good performance of confined masonry buildings when you see uh, this is the photograph from chile uh, in 2010 all the buildings adjoining rc including rc buildings collapse but this is the confined masonry which is standing same case is here also so in short in summary i should say if constructed properly keeping all the engineering perspective whatever we will discuss in mind definitely confined masonry is the promising solution for uh, the, uh, for uh, for the building industry in india and in rural india in particular for low to medium rise constructions so typically the key component of the confined masonry is includes the vertical element that is called as a tai column not rc column it is a tai column it is not designed as per is 456 or any uh, code so this is lightly reinforced it is and there after and the horizontal elements are called as a bond beam or tai beam and this is the slab so basically masonry walls are there they are impressed at all the periphery uh, by means of a lightly reinforced rc elements when uh, you talk about the interaction of this masonry with the rc element and let us have a comparison between the reinforced concrete moment resisting frame 
this have is confined masonry in when this rcc frame is subjected to the lateral load what will happen masonry being rigid and stiff it will be uh, it will subjected to crack and there will be there could be uh, uh, bending in tie column and in uh, in columns and beams and as a result uh, the basically the walls are in fill walls they are not supposed to carry any lateral loading only the lateral loads are carried by the uh, what uh, columns and beams in contrast when you see the confined masonry in which the combined action joint action the lateral loads are resisted jointly by rc element as well as masonry so no significant bending in tie column and tie beam is noticed and as a result there would could not be any gap at the corners which normally occur in a rcc in fill walls and this is the basically crux of the mechanism uh, where uh, the effective performance is achieved means in this whatever the investment you are doing in walls is of contributing very minimally in lateral load resistance whereas in the confined masonry joint action is come into action to resist the lateral forces when you see the load path means how the load is transferred from the roof to the foundation let us have a comparison between the three different uh, building systems that is the unreinforced masonry confined masonry and rcc frame in with infill masonry so in unreinforced masonry the walls are basically responsible to transfer the gravity load straight uh, in vertically down if when they are subjected to the lateral loads so this uh, they are subjected uh, they are subjected to the diagonal cracking so in addition to axial lateral they are also but because of poor is uh, engineering property uh, there are a lot of failure whereas in the confined masonry they are perfectly fine in the axial load but when they are subjected to the lateral loading the uh, instead of entire wall is exposed to the cracking rather or uh, entire building is Uh, divided into a panel and a small pa the cracks are limited to the panels only so total collapse mechanism can be averted at the most cracks in the panels will occur when you talk about the rcc uh, frame building with infill masonry in which basically the columns and beams are responsible for resisting your uh, axial and lateral loads and joints basically are predominantly subjected to all kinds of uh, axial load rotation and moments and the infill walls are damaged so that is uh, as a result you are making the corners which are subjected to high amount of axial loads more weaker and vulnerable if not detailed properly so having understood uh, the comparison between the confined masonry and other building systems let us have a key difference between the rcc frame building and confined masonry in rcc building what do you do first of all you erect a frame and then you construct the masonry walls as and when required and wherever it is required so it is simple it is acting as a infill wall whereas in the confined masonry you uh, the sequence of construction changes in this you have to first of all construct the masonry walls up to certain height maximum 1.2 meters and then provide uh, uh, before that you have to provide the reinforcement in the tie columns and after uh, constructing the walls up to certain height leaving the uh, grooves at the ends then provide the shuttering at the two edges at the end then uh, do the uh, concreting so that's how you are uh, um, you are uh, embracing the entire masonry wall and the masonry wall uh, adequately with uh, uh, with the surrounded rc element so that's why the this whenever this confined masonry panel is subjected to the lateral load a combined action takes place so this is uh, and once the confined masonry buildings is constructed using the sequence of construction what i just now discussed so it looks like similar to your rcc frame building that's how it has it, it results into economy also to the tune of around 35 to 40% in total cost of structural cost so uh, so it is very ideal technology from single story to multi storied up to four story like uh, even in seismic zone 5 so again the key difference in rcc frame building which is rcc frame structures which can be called as a or categorized as a high tech system because uh, it uh, Uh, it is incorporating steel concrete form work and it is designed and also and and so forth but whatever has been displayed on this particular slide when you go to the field 
so this is ba basically the general construction uh, sequence of construction in rcc uh, frame structures within in film machinery but whatever has been uh, told to you by now that high tech systems which we require these are the prerequisites but when you go to the site and see and none, none of them is being followed and that is basically resulting into uh, vulnerable buildings so rc uh, so rc frames are too complex for safe construction simpler systems are needed and confined masonry is one of uh, them in this as i mentioned reinforcement is erected first then uh, um, uh, then the plinth beam is casted thereafter the masonry is then up to certain height then casting of uh, your rc element is done up to uh, up done and that as a result the entire masonry is confined with uh, the lightly reinforced rc element so these are the basically components of the confined masonry buildings when it is constructed so it is basically plinth beam or bond beam at the lintel level roof level if you have rc slab then there is no need of any beam at the rc slab level then again this vertical element is the tie column then again this is the bond beam and this is slab apart from that you have to uh, you can see in this particular picture that additional certain grooves have been provided and this basically tithing tithing maximum to the tune of 40 mm you have to provide it is ranging from 25 to 20 50 mm if you see the uh, un uh, unknowingly the people which are which are, is being followed in the practice they are providing half brick almost so as a result it is very difficult to pour the concrete and compact the concrete and the, as a result honeycombing uh, takes place so it is good practice that we should give, give this particular tithing in the range of 25 to 30, 40 mm uh, that again has certain relationship with the uh, your aggregate size if you have 20 mm aggregate size maximum then it is 2t so that much uh, uh, that is the basically limiting factor Bef before going into further details uh, there are general planning aspects which should be looked into in the confined masonry building so this tie columns need to be provided at all intersections all corners around the openings the spacing between the corners should be limited maximum to 4 meters um, for single story building you can opt for even 120 mm thick brick masonry but for the higher story you have to increase the wall thicknesses uh in this again you have to consider in the confined masonry the slenderness of your wall panels it should be the slenderness is governed by h by t height to thickness or l length to thickness ratio which should be less than 25 and, and the minimum wall thickness should be more than 120 meter uh, 20 120 mm and, and the uh, so so why uh, so when you have understood about the uh, construction of a masonry building so the masonry walls need to be constructed for the confined masonry also in the similar fashion as uh, with the good construction practices as being adopted in the masonry uh, masonry work so the thing need to be provided so now if so this uh, so again i would like to explain because in this the using good quality of material ensuring good workmanship and faithfully implementing the architectural and structural uh, guidelines which is uh, I, which i'll be sharing is uh, of a paramount important when you are constructing a masonry walls up to 1 meter uh, before that you are providing the reinforcement normally up to 3 story 4 10 mm dia bars or 4 12 mm dia bars are sufficient the size of the tie column will be the uh, equal to the thickness of the wall when you are constructing the walls you have to leave the end tithing in the range of 25 to 40 mm at the end once the tithing is left you have uh, and wall is constructed up to certain height provide the shattering on the four the faces and pour the concrete alternatively if you are not comfortable by uh, in providing this kind of a tithing you can provide the plain edges but and at the same time you have plenty amount of west reinforcement bar so those reinforced uh, 400 mm a uh, uh, bar west material is uh, can be provided in the masonry 400 mm in, uh, embedded within the mortar and rest of the things into the concrete or passing through through 
to the column so that is how you can uh, you can achieve the interlocking action between the rc uh, tie column and masonry uh, bond uh, masonry wall so so there are both the options available for you and uh, you can adopt alternatively and the for this detail of the good practice of construction at the at the intersection of the tie column and masonry is shown here so this is the tithing arrangement this is uh, the mechanism had made solid units and this is the provision of horizontal reinforcement when tithing is not possible so provide the additional 400 mm long uh, bar which is passing through the tie column so that basically interlocks the adjoining masonry walls along with the tie column so this is the uh, typical construction uh, tie column construction i have mentioned that after the machinery provide the shuttering and pour the concrete typical detailing of the tie column is uh, is typically it is provided with 4 10 mm dia bar if uh, the building is of 2 to 3 story you of course you have to uh, we have developed the design guidelines also you can refer to that as well so typically for 2 to 3 story buildings uh, in seismic zone 2 or 3 you can provide minimum 4 10 mm dia bar and uh, rings of 6 mm dia 150 cm to center or uh, i should say lateral ties and the lateral tie spacing at the end region minimum 500 mm it should be close to space 100 mm center to center and either other portion it should be 200 mm center to center and at the lap portion it will be restricted again to 150 mm whereas uh, the size of the bond beam you can see the bond beam width will be the equivalent to the width of the wall the thickness of the bond beam may be around 150 mm and it is also provided with typically 4 10 mm dia bars and a stir up 6 mm dia 150 center to center you have to be very careful at intersections or at end spans adequate bending and connectivity to the reinforcement need to be given and the bond beam reinforcement should be taken uh, should be taken to, through the longitudinal reinforcement of the uh, tie columns then only adequate uh, action or adequate connection between the beam column joints is achieved and uh, apart from that whatever the ductile detailing need to be followed in the IS 13920 need to be implemented in this particular practice as well. So, I, uh, whatever I have discussed, so I will I would like to show you typically through this particular video.
say that we have a structure which will like to get a list of the raptor improvements, which is also specifically designed to do so. Or by the hack with otherwise. So the purpose is here, like one of them all together. So, uh, with this video, I think uh, most of the concept of confined misery and its failure pattern uh, is clear to you. So, uh, now just have a look, quick look on the uh, planning aspects. So, as I mentioned earlier, that you need to provide the tie columns at every uh, three to four meters spacing uh, and at the corners and at the around the openings. Uh, another important uh, parameter you have to see. Uh, looked into is the wall density requirement apart from the spacing. So wall density requirement is basically the uh, wall density can be defined as the total cross-sectional area of all the confined, uh, confined wall at the sill level because when you uh, calculate that the sill level, it uh, takes care about the openings in terms of doors and window uh, in one direction and divided by the sum of the floor plan area of all the floors in a building. So in this, when you cal calculate this particular ratio in one particular direction, so for seismic zone three, four, and five, it should be in the range of two, three, and four point five percent. And the, in short, D is given by AW by AP. And uh, for the low D values observed, uh, if this percentage of wall density ratio is less, then you could be able, uh, uh, susceptible to more damage. So this is the what in the limits. So this has to be satisfied in both the directions. Apart from that, the building configuration, as it is in the other building systems, also applicable to confined masonry buildings, the building should be symmetrical in both in plan and elevation. Uh, and if it is an irregular buildings, it uh, it should be regular also. And if it is irregular, you have to convert into the re uh, regular one by providing adequate amount of separation gap. How much separation gap need to be provided? That is 20 mm per uh, story height, uh, per, uh, per number of stories. So according to that, you have to provide this uh, separation gap. Again, the very slender building should, not, should be avoided. Apart from that, inverted pendulum type buildings are unstable. They, are, they should not be permitted. Even the sudden change in the stiffness in elevation should be avoided by giving proper separation gap. So, so regular buildings, as I mentioned, are very good. Irregular buildings should be uh, should not be allowed. Cement unnecessary aspect ratio is also one of the important uh, parameter. Length to width ratio should be less than four. If at all it is need to be constructed, you have to provide the adequate separation gap. Then wall layout is also very much important. It should be symmetrical in both the directions and uniformly placed. So left side. It is only high amount of wall density is there in one direction, whereas very low in the other, which is not correct. So right one is should be encouraged. The general uh, wall distribution should be uniform in all the plan area, not lying in one particular direction. Then the walls should always be placed continuously in in uh, along, along the vertical heights directly one over the other. 
it should not be the such wall should not be constructed on the cantilevered portion this is basically you need to have adequate seismic load path when you talk about the openings opening should also be symmetrical aligning uh, one over the other each other in elevation then the gable whenever you are coming across with the gable band or any kind of irregular masonry things it all the masonry should be embraced with the uh, our type bond beam alternatively to discourage this kind of a failure in the gable and failure you can uh, provide instead of masonry a lightweight material like uh, gi sheet and so on and so forth uh, the good as a good, good construction practice the reinforcement on the bond beam should pass through the longitudinal reinforcement of the column if not possible then provide the adequate do double bar with adequate lap at the intersections of the wall the uh, the reinforcement should be embed, uh, should be well uh, properly bent if not possible then you can make use of a u shape hook uh, u shape bars with having a leg length in the other, uh, adjoining element by a length of ld ld is your anchorage length so they can also be provided if not possible to bend the bar adequately to the uh, perpendicular other perpendicular wall as regards to the spacing of the lateral ties i mentioned earlier at the end region or 500 uh, 500 mm center to say, uh, 500 mm up uh, mm above and below the slab or floor level should be Uh, confined that is maximum spacing should be limited to 100 mm and in the middle half it could be 8 inches or 200 mm at the overlap portion wherever the longitudinal lapping is happening there the spacing should be confined to 150 mm along with the 135 degree hooks having a leg length of 10d uh, so having uh, looked into the concept mechanism of the failure and detailing uh, design parameters required now there was a big question mark on about the understanding of the confined masonry buildings and for that purpose we at cbri we have conducted full scale experimental investigation on the masonry buildings in which we have done the comparison of different type of building that is a unreinforced masonry reinforced masonry building means unreinforced masonry buildings means without any earthquake resistant measures reinforced masonry building means the masonry buildings with all uh, horizontal and uh, vertical reinforcement as given in our is codes 4326 and confined masonry the what we have discussed all these experiments have been performed in our laboratory on a full scale uh, having similar geometrical and Uh, geometrical properties and material properties uh, the plan size of this particular full scale building was 3 meters by 3 meter in plan having a 3 meter height uh, so this is uh, and i will i will not go into detail the, about the experimental work which has been conducted on the unreinforced and reinforced masonry building but definitely i will be taking uh, you through how the uh, uh, experimental investigation has been carried out on a full scale confined masonry buildings in subsequent slides so this is the picture which is centrally placed in this particular slide shows the full scale confined masonry buildings which is having a plan dimension of 3 meters by 3 meters having a height of 3 meters provided with corner uh, uh, tie column at the corners having the thickness of 230 by 230 a size of 230 by 230 with thickening of 40 mm bond beam is again having a width of 230 mm whereas the depth is 200 mm with 410 mm dia rebars and it is the rcc roof slab so uh, how the construction was made in the laboratory we have first of all laid the plinth beam uh, and which is adequately connected to the uh, strong floor of the test uh, test uh, in our uh, test floor and uh through the this beam we have uh, erected the rebars 410 mm die bars at the corners and the uh, masonry work has been done up to 1.2 meters uh and leaving the thing of 40 mm at the ends after the construction of two perpendicular walls the shuttering was provided in this fashion and concrete was poured and upon pouring the concrete uh when the concrete was in a green state 
a teething was created by inserting a brick and then removing it and after doing so again the subsequent brick work was carried out that this is the picture which shows you the teething arrangement uh, style the way we have provided after doing the again the masonry work the shuttering and casting is uh, carried out the process is repeated till the construction is completed in all respects so this is the complete picture of the uh, building which was done and this is the building which was ready for the testing so this is how the test model was constructed upon the construction of this particular model this uh, uh, the lateral incremental loading was applied so at the roof level so this under the test full scale test was carried out under displacement controlled cyclic uh, reverse cyclic loading at the and the it was and it was sub, it was created by attaching the actuator at the roof level the load coming from the actuator was distributed uniformly at eight different locations uh, on either side to achieve the cyclic action and to the, as a to measure the response of the test structure we have provided the strain gauges lvdts uh, at different locations and uh, uh, and in contrast the displacement was measured by the actuator and load was also measured uh, uh, initial force is also measured by the actuator upon conducting the tests the data was analyzed and the results were assembled uh, assimilated and presented in the typically uh, obtained uh, style to understand the seismic performance of the confined masonry so during the testing the, the this is the hysteresic loop which was carried out uh, which was created and which clearly shows the uh, the area under that this particular hysteresis curve shows the energy dissipation capacity of the test structure and to understand in a in a better fashion uh, load displacement curve was plotted and which clearly shows the maximum load attained by this particular building was 152 km with the deformability of around 64 mm similar uh, similar uh, uh, efforts have been uh, made while conducting the experiment on the unreinforced masonry and reinforced masonry buildings in fact under after uh, so and the same results were again superimposed on this particular slide uh so this that clearly shows the confined masonry buildings are uh, are 3.42 times more stronger in terms of strength is concerned when compared with the unreinforced masonry and 4.29 times stronger in terms of ductility when compared to urm buildings apart from that the stiffness which can be calculated initial stiffness in the confined masonry is uh, phenomenally high as compared with the unreinforced masonry buildings interestingly uh, so that itself is demonstrated by a minimal interventions a uh, great amount of enhancement in the seismic performance in, in terms of strength stiffness ductility and uh, damage pattern can be uh, achieved apart from uh, after conducting all these tests on con un confined masonry uh, reinforced masonry and reinforced unreinforced masonry buildings we have retrofitted these buildings so this unreinforced masonry buildings were retrofitted by means of a stitching grouting then uh, similar is uh, and ad providing the additional corner vertical reinforcement uh, uh, even after testing uh, what we have observed so you can see in this particular graph urm rep that shows the unreinforced masonry building after repair and retrofit still we could not achieve a much increase in the its seismic uh, parameters same thing happened with the uh, with the reinforced masonry buildings also but interestingly after retrofitting of the confined masonry buildings i will show you in the subsequent subsequent slides there was a phenomenally increase in the in its uh, uh, engineering properties of structure as a whole so before going into the comparison of the retrofitted confined masonry model i would like to share that whatever has been done internationally we cannot borrow because as i mentioned earlier that masonry is a very complex uh, uh, complex system because when you some, uh, uh, compare the engineering properties of units and the mortar in western country country and india in western uh, in western countries the masonry units are stiffer than mortar whereas in india the mortar is more stiffer than 
uh, units and as a result uh, the machinery when it is constructed in the western uh, conditions it is subjected to the biaxial tensile stresses and the motor is subjected to the triaxial compressive stresses in contrast to india phenomena is entirely different here the units are subjected to the triaxial compressive stresses whereas motor is subjected to the biaxial tensile stresses so simple this is the micro level study but we cannot directly borrow the results from elsewhere and that is why we need to perform a detailed investigation in indian context if we want to put this particular system in practice in vogue in in our country and for that purpose we have carried out extensive experimental investigation on units that is bricks motor uh, for understanding the engineering properties i am reporting only the engineering properties of the units and motor which has been used in the construction of this particular uh, this confined machinery building whereas when you see in india uh, the compressive strength or crushing strength of the uh, bund clay brick unit you see it is ranging from 3.5 mpa to 18 mpa in uh, calcutta north eastern region you will see high strength of this compressive stresses whereas in the southern portion lower than maharashtra the compressive stresses in the bricks is very very poor even less than 5 mpa sometimes even less than 3.5 mpa as well and minimum prerequisite requirement for the compressive strength is 3.5 mpa so uh, we have understood the all the engineering properties through detailed experimental investigation of units motor and machinery wall panels so and important thing is we have also conducted the diagonal shear test as per stm 519 to understand the shear property shear strength of uh, machinery walls and its failure mechanism as per the protocol given in is 4 stm 519 based on this detailed investigations of the machinery work what we have done here and available across the country we have carried out the extensive linear regression analysis which shows and establish the relationship between the uh, modulus of elasticity and uh, motor machinery strength so as per our study we have observed that em is equals to 456 times the fm fm is the motor machinery strength and again we have attempted and result uh, outcome of our detailed investigation was to establish the relationship and it was subsequently com compared with the in uh, international opinion and the internet indian opinion and as based on this now the uh, in our is 1893 the relationship has been embedded because we cannot every time uh, go and perform such kind of a test a generalized equations has been given uh, based on the study in is 1893 2016 that which is given is em is equals to 500 times the fm again we have conducted the non linear regression analysis on the motor prisms uh, on the units and thereby obtain the machinery uh, uh, prism strength means in short basically it is very difficult to conduct experiment on the machinery all the time which is very very difficult and complex so having and but in contrast you can conduct always the experiment on a unit single brick or motor and once you know the uh, machinery strength or brick strength or motor strength by using this particular formulation you can e very easily calculate the in, uh, prism strength and and for that purpose extensive work has already uh, has been carried out and various relationships have been obtained The, and it was compared with the international scenario and national scenario and based on this study we have uh, generalized this particular relationship as f dash m that is the machinery strength is equals to 0.433 into fp to the power 0.638 into fm to the power 0.366 fp is the unit strength fm is the motor strength having known this two values you can very easily calculate the machinery strength and this based on this our study this uh, formulation has been embedded again into is 1893 2016 now uh, i would like to take you uh, 
to the retrofitting aspects of the confined machinery so so there are different techniques so uh, which are which can be adopted so this is the model which shows the full scale unreinforced machinery building upon damage it was some uh, upon damage the black color uh, you can see this is the shear cracks and sliding all this kind of a damage happened then it was retrofitted by providing vertical reinforcement and this particular building was not having any rc band so in, and it is very difficult to pro provide rc band in the existing building so alternatively what we have done we have taken a ms flat of 75 mm wide 4 mm thick and it was provided on either faces and it was connected through a bolt across the wall at the space of 450 mm center to center and the, and welded at the corners and that's how we can create a uh, integral box action in the existing building and for the retrofitting and so so this is in summary the load displacement curve of confined machinery unreinforced machinery you can see this is the unreinforced machinery 35 kN whereas in the confined machinery on the same plan on geometrical and material property we got 152 same thing if we to take about the uh, rmm it was around 54 kN in contrast i got 152 kN peak load uh, peak lateral load strength deformability uh, capacity for urm rm and confined machinery has gone from 11 mm in unreinforced machinery 22 and 24 mm in case of rmm and 50 as uh, around 54 mm in case of a confined machine so now the strength strength also increase so in short the confined machinery promises a good structural performance in terms of seismic resistance or it can offer a robust seismic performance in terms of strength stiffness ductility deformability energy dissipation capacity when it is compared with the unreinforced machinery and reinforced machinery so this is what i have uh, Uh, already discussed now upon damage of this particular confined machinery building the way you can see in this particular picture that this is the typical crack pattern uh, which has been obtained after the test of confined machinery buildings again now it was a challenge if even if my confined machinery building is there if it is subjected to lateral load and if it is damaged then how can i retrofit it and it is uh, retrofitting there are very of some option but when i am adopting a retrofitting of an existing damaged building whether it is a unreinforced machinery building or a confined machinery building i should use a locally available low cost materials uh, or waste material in particular and for that purpose extensive retrofitting exercise has already been carried out in that we have uh, make use of six different options in which gi well uh, chicken mesh welded wire mesh then the nylon mesh the mosquito mesh normally you use in your home that also was implemented then geo grid then packing tape poly uh, uh, plastic tape what is being used that also also used and last one you can see in this is the plastic cement bags whenever you are doing construction of your house uh after using the cement you just throw away the plastic bags so these uh, bags can be uh, connected to the opened up can be connected to the each other provided with this kind of a holes of 50 mm by 50 mm and can be used as a mesh so perforated cement plastic bags were also uh, explored how it will uh, if implemented how it will increase my damaged uh, machinery or uh, how it will improve the uh, engineering properties of a machinery so for that purpose extensive work was carried out on a prism wall panels and in each uh, so in this basically the control specimen was unreinforced machinery later on different options have been jacketed using all these six different options and it was embedded within the plaster of 15 mm thick one is to six uh, cement sand mortar one is to four six cement sand mortar and then it was subjected to uni axial uh, axial load and the response was measured in terms of the load carrying capacity and the crack pattern and uh, volumetric expansion in both the directions to know the uh, different engineering properties so this is what the damage pattern was obtained on the prisms 
which was jacketed using different options and the results were then plotted in terms of compressive stress and strain which shows that the uh, plastic cement um, perforated uh, bags have shown a phenomenally good in enhancement in the compressive strain to the tune of around 6.2 uh, uh, 2 m and mpa whereas maximum was achieved in case of a gi welded wire mesh which was around 6.4 mpa whereas very uh, in the un unreinforced masonry very uh, the strength was around 3.2 mpa so there was a phenomenal around uh, change in the in compressive strength property upon jacketing to the tune of almost uh, double enhancement in uh, contrast when you see the different other options that is the grid uh, uh, so they have shown relatively lesser enhancement in the compressive strength when you compare with the welded wire mesh similar further we have uh, conducted to un have an understanding about the shear strength of the masonry so for that purpose we have followed the protocol as given in ASTM 519 using the masonry of uniform uh, size it was jacketed using all six different options along with that one option was the control specimen that was unreinforced masonry and again the results were plotted in terms of shear strength and strain which again shows substantial enhancement in the shear strength stresses in case of Uh, plastic cement bags and the uh, uh, and with uh, when it was jacketed with using the welded wire mesh so that is uh, that is building a confidence that we can phenomenally increase the shear strength compressive strength tensile strength upon implementing all these different options when compared with the control specimen of the unreinforced masonry panel now uh, upon upon uh, compare, doing the cost benefit analysis or cost risk analysis i should say ideally uh, uh, optimal options could be the plastic cement bag meshes typically due to the advantage that it is uh, it offers high compressive and shear strength it is flexible economical reusable non corrodible minimum thickness and adequate bonding with masonry so this uh, mesh can be uh, provided on the periphery of the uh, masonry and it can be uh, connected by means of a nailing or by means of a epoxy and then again it can be tested uh, and it can be embedded within the plasters so uh, so so the, uh, after selecting this particular approach a uh, damage confined masonry model was first of all grouted with using the cement grout and uh, after grouting the entire building uh, was jacketed using the application of plastic cement bag mesh as i have discussed just now and it was provided on either faces of the walls and then it was embedded within the plaster of 15 mm thick when it was four cement sand mortar and again the system Sorry. full uh, retrofitted uh, building system was ready for later load test in this you can see this is again the we have painted it using white color to have a clear uh, cut view of cracks happening then the on the top the uh, here this is the actuator which is applying the lateral displacement control lateral load on this at the roof level because the inertia force is acting at the roof level the load single point load coming from the actuator was divided into eight different locations by uh, specially designed drillage loading framing at one end and similar system was provided on the other and it was connected at the bottom and top uh, uh, together to incorporate reverse cyclic loading on under displacement control at the roof level on this particular retrofitted uh, masonry building model uh, upon uh, conducting this incremental increase in the displacement control loading uh, it was tested up to the failure but not total collapse the and do while doing so under quasi static condition we have noted how the damages are being occurred and this is the final damage pattern which was noted and which is uh, representative of typical damage pattern which we normally observe after the uh, after the earthquake in masonry buildings so this is the typical uh, diagonal cracks uh, uh, which is starting from the uh, co opening corners and marching towards the corner 
and wider cags when the displacement is uh, uh, large then sometimes uh, the advantage of this particular bonding is provide integral box action and providing and con pro pro providing confinement to the masonry even if the cracks are happening this tie column and bond beams do not allow these cracks to propagate beyond the uh, this particular element so they are even at the maximum loading the bending of longitudinal reinforcement have been noticed so in short the cracks have been arrested within the wall panels so that's how you can restrict the collapse of uh, wall panel and again from the engineering perspective you need to draw for have a better understanding of the test results a typically observed hysteresis loop followed by the load displacement curve in this load, load, uh, slide you can see the load displacement curve for the all the tested masonry uh, masonry walls along with the confined masonry retrofitted cm ret uh, in this interestingly you can see earlier we have observed around 152 kN peak lateral load uh, resistance and 54 kilo, uh, 54 mm uh, maximum displacement in contrast to the confined masonry after retrofitting a damaged model uh, after retrofitting has further enhanced the uh, lateral strength which is around 192 kilo newton and deformation up to 74 mm so that apart from that there is a substantial increase in the strength there was substantial increase in the energy dissipation capacity that is the area under the curve in the hysteristic loop so that itself uh, explains that the significant improvement in the lateral strength capacity of the retrofitted confined masonry, uh, masonry was by 22 percent in terms of stiffness and ductility it was 15 and 23 percent and the increase in the lateral strength by 4.22 times when compared with the urm so having uh, this kind of significant improvement in the engineering properties by provision of the results on the uh, confinement uh, con uh, so this this basically provides a confidence that definitely the confined mystery and the retrofitting options which we have adopted on the damaged model are really a promising and giving a perfect uh, enhancement in the engineering properties of the masonry buildings and it is the best possible uh, solutions and in future if one should ask we should only implement confined mystery buildings in day to day construction practice so to have a better understanding about the construction of uh, confined necessary building because it is having an option of horizontal and vertical of, uh, expansion as well. So if we uh, talk about a simple house, a residential building 5.7 meters by 5.44 meters, pink colors shows the tie columns at uh, regularly paced as per the guidelines and principle what we have discussed. To provide this particular, uh, uh, to construct this particular house, we have gone for the typical file, pile foundation based on the soil conditions. So we have, uh, so this was designed for a two-story building. The piles of 300 mm dia, three meters long, have been provided at uh, below at every uh, column. You can see that P1, P1 represents the location of the pile. GB shows the location of the grade beam, which is provided at the ground level. And then uh, these are the reinforcement detailing, which is provided around the openings, particularly the large openings. The typical detailing of the corner reinforcement, as we have discussed, have been followed. And the uh, this is the uh, slab. And so the construction methodology, when you see, Either you can go for the strip footing, if you, if you are opting for the strip footing, excavate up to the hard strata, provide the PCC, then uh, erect the, uh, provide the foundation masonry, then at the, at, uh, at, uh, at identified locations of the tie column, erect the reinforcement. After erecting the reinforcement, provide the masonry up to certain height, up to the plinth, but typically, by leaving the uh, grooves at the ends, then providing the shuttering and pour the concrete, then providing the bond beam at the plinth level, again repeating the masonry work in the similar fashion, 
and go on repeating the process so up, upon reaching to the lintel level again providing the bond beam then masonry works again pouring the concrete and then casting and laying the rcc slabs so once the construction is complete it looks like uh, uh, similar to the rcc frame building but it is a confined masonry building and here all the tie columns have been provided at the corners at the all intersections whereas around the openings additional 2 8 mm diabas have been provided uh, and then you adopt this particular technique you can very easily construct a four story building using average compressive strength uh, of units and uh, mortar using locally available construction materials and skills up to four story and uh, to have a better comparison definitely a uh, techno commercial angle will be also very important so technical angle when you see how the engineering properties will be there and commercial angle how what will be the cost and uh, how much design effort is gone into so to have this we have done a uh, comparison between the under urm rm confined masonry and rcc frame building in which you can see this is confined masonry always shows uh, merits in terms of the Uh, load transfer, vertical axial load or gravity load, or uh, and horizontal load is concerned. Phenomenally good performance. Behavior under lateral loading and axial loading is phenomenally good. Design efforts is very low in comparison with the uh, RCC frame building. Earthquake vulnerability is very low in comparison with all the other uh, typologies. Construction uh, level of difficulties is very low, whereas very high diff. Uh, other uh, typologies are quite difficult sequence of construction as i we have discussed throughout this lectures has to be adopted and others for other typology you are also, we, that has also been discussed quality control average quality control is required because you i cannot say no quality control you should have adequate quality control then only the performance can be improved further improved in the in case of a confined masonry but relatively it is the qqc uh, in case of a confined masonry is quite low as compared to the infill masonry uh, uh, rcc frame structures maximum up to uh, four story you can construct even in uh, seismic zone 5 whereas there is no limit for rcc frame building for one to two story in unreinforced masonry and uh, for the reinforced masonry you can go For, for, but definitely for that purpose you need to design important thing is the cost and time you it requires relatively low uh, cost when compared with the infill masonry walls and moderate cost in case of our uh, reinforced masonry so you can have we have also conducted a statistical exercise on cost comparison on different typologies which shows that around 30 to 35% of cost saving in the structure can be achieved for similar kind of a building typology uh, when you adopt the infill masonry rcc frame building and hardly 4% additional cost has to be in uh, has to be uh, is gone into in the construction of a confined masonry when you compare the construction of reinforced masonry uh, buildings of similar geometry and material properties so there is substantial uh, promises Uh, you can achieve uh, in the confined masonry and based on this we uh, we have brought uh, a very good book which is available in the our library also and in our uh, cbri uh, sales department which explains about the concept experimental and uh, evaluation structural analysis and design procedure and detailed engineering perspective uh, based on this uh, book uh, we have also Uh, prepared or compiled a structural design and detailing for the confined masonry for typically 25 different options of EWS economical weaker sections houses once uh, in located in different seismic zones and different uh, story height ranging from one story to five story in seismic different uh, seismic zone that is two to uh, seismic zone five. has been compiled in this document with all engineering drawings architectural and structural and engineering drawings along with the engineering uh, guidelines uh, in this particular book apart from that uh, design guidelines and good construction uh, practices uh, literature is also available which can be downloaded from cbri website 
So to conclude, I should say tremendous, uh, tremendous progress towards seismic safety has been done uh, internationally and in our country as well. In fact, I am proud to say that um, in our country, the earthquake resistant design codes are much, much stronger. Uh, and only lacuna is we need to uh, use them in our day to day practice and implement them in the field. Then only really resiliency can be built in in our structural system. And uh, definitely this will be focused, uh, with, this will take care for the new buildings. But we have to take care about the existing buildings as well. And as discussed in this particular lecture, there are various options in which by which you can do the retrofitting of existing uh, uh, vulnerable buildings by making use of locally available construction material or a uh, waste material also. So they, upon, uh, once you do this particular uh, implementation, the, whenever this particular major earthquake provides a window of opportunity, if we plan in proper fashion for the existing building. We need to construct, we need to take a, a big perspective uh, action plan on retrofitting of the buildings uh, using the different technologies, approaches, what has been uh, described in this lecture. And for the new buildings, you need to make use of existing design codes and good construction practice and implement at site. So whatever the uh, earthquake happened by now has provided a very good window of opportunities to learn what has what went wrong and it has given us an opportunity to learn how to retrofit it if it implemented it properly i will say that earthquake do not kill the people it is the man in his different role as a builder or different stakeholders kills the people so truth is in front of you now it is uh, uh, towards and we need to take uh, it forward whatever the position what we are so we have to see uh, towards a new paradigm this is uh, big we have to think big imagine big and that's what has been done by our uh, le uh, ancestor leaders this is the picture is 2001 dubai this is the picture now 2020 dubai so when they have changed, why can't we change and we can make our uh, country a disaster resilient uh, infrastructural facility? Only thing what we have to do is we have to apply common sense. We have to work in a teamwork. Uh, we have to work in a, we don't have to work in isolation. We have to work in a teamwork. Otherwise, we are always have a tendency to fight with each other after committing this kind of a thing. So that is why remember that we need to be civilized, modernized, globalized. But first we need to be a safe. So cost is not important. Safety is more paramount importance. Hence, this is the way of life, way of journey. And for that purpose, we should take uh, proactive measures. And you all are playing a very important role as a teacher, and you should you are the people who are and are who are the architect for building the next generation engineers and if you translate these things to your students definitely we will be able to make a earthquake resilient infrastructure in our country thank you so much for your patience hearing and uh, the floor is open for the discussion this is the website link to the website you can Login and download the related documents. Thank you so much once again. Uh, thank you, Dr. Adul Suresh, here, uh, for your food, fruitful session. I think few participants have posted uh, questions in their chat box. Uh, can you please look into the chat box, Professor? Yeah, yeah, they are clear. I will start from the top. Absolutely fine. Enjoying, yes, enjoying. Uh, Professor Meeta Verma, SAIT Jabalpur. Sir, it is, is this concept of confined nursery is incorporated in code? Uh, very good question. First of all, uh, Professor Meeta, uh, so far it was not there, but for, uh, code has been formulated. 
the draft code is has also underwent uh, so many revisions and uh, hopefully in next meeting of bis th cd39 the code on confined missionary will be released in maybe a couple of months two to three months so now it has been incorporated please give us some example of the confined missionary construction in archipelago port zero in india so i have given you example you can download uh, the literature what i have uh, sh shared you the link and that clearly shows uh, based on the experimental work what we have conducted at cbri the design guidelines codal provisions have been uh, have been uh, evolved put in the codes put in this guidelines and apart from that we have successfully implemented this particular technologies in different states up bihar in uh, north entire northeastern himachal and importantly after 2013 disaster in kedarnath everything was vanished now the reconstruction of kedarnath in kedarpuri which was taken up in which only the confined masonry was used only there units was not the brick masonry but it was stone concrete blocks were used as a units so this is what the success story i could should say in uh, in short uh, then uh, dr professor anurag wahane sir any codal provision clause condition criteria aspect ratio can can uh, say yes codes will be available draft code is in circulations in next two months it will be there by the time the code arrives you can refer the design document which i have circulated next is again dr payal mehta sir if we uh, provide the separation joint for irregular building then will it not be more vulnerable for ponding effect no separation joints need to be calculated as i mentioned uh, 20 mm per meter height of the building so that will basically take uh, taken care about the ponding uh, ponding aspect it will not, so suppose you have a uh, two storied buildings normally will have a height of 6 meters so 6 meters so you can provide uh, 40 mm uh, separation gap 20 mm per floor so that 40 mm your structure will not deflect so ponding will not occur uh because masonry being a very uh, rigid stiff stiff so 40 mm uh, things will not take this then what is uh, professor jyotesh gupta no question uh, professor mahata plastic cement bags cannot be used as reinforcement as cannot be used as then i don't understand uh, i will be happy to interact with uh, dr payal mehta later on uh, then the dr Su sulman khan uh, is mentioning how is the behavior of the confined structure different from the frame structure i think uh, in uh, different slides and along with the video i have explained that thing uh, basically it is embracing your walls all together and combined action of your walls and uh, rcc frames are coming in picture for resisting lateral loads then mr uh, chennai bishwas uh, there is any construction record in india using confined masonry concept yes there are several stories as i mentioned kedarnath literature link i have shared chetan again shows that uh, Uh, the, please uh, please give us a more information about the shaking table te design model uh, any textbook or website so you can refer the textbook which i have shared you uh, shared with you on the you can download it from this link so that very well explains about the experimental work which we have carried out and based on that the design guidelines which have been developed and the codes draft code is already available in the bis and the final code will be available very soon thank you so much for uh, i hope i have addressed all the issues yes stop present so i hope there are no more questions
So thank you, Dr. Adhij Chaurasia, for your uh, wonderful session on uh, seismic resistant design and construction of masonry and confined masonry buildings. So it was really informative, and uh, all the participants, I think, they have uh, enjoyed your session very well uh, because uh, they had interacted with you very well also through a lot of questions. So thank you once again on behalf of our uh, college and also on behalf of all the participants here. So I thank you so much uh, uh, for your uh, presence here in this uh, adult sponsored FPP program. So thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Namaskar. Stay safe. Stay safe. Yeah, thank you, thank you.